My name is Paul Krasner. I am the author of Who's to Say What's Obscene? Politics, Culture, and Comedy in America Today, with a foreword by Arianna Huffington. Uh, the original title I was going to give this book was We Have Ways of Making You Laugh, but then uh, there was already a book with that same title, and it was a collection of cartoons, all of which had a swastika theme. And it was uh, uh, done by a cartoonist named Sam Gross, who uh, I was the first one ever to publish in my magazine, The Realist. Um, so it's come full cycle. The people who read my stuff uh, uh, want and expect to, to uh, be provoked and, and to um, um, laugh and think at the same time. My goal in publishing The Realist was to communicate without compromise. And uh, I didn't have many competitors uh, because I didn't have any advertisers, producers, publishers. I had no one to answer to but the readers. And the readers trusted me to offend them until, until um, I stepped on their toes. And then they would say, now you've gone too far. Um, but now the World Wide Web enables anybody who can afford to have a computer or they can go to a library to communicate without compromise. And uh, that was my original notion. Uh, it was an ideal, but my mission statement to myself was <clears throat> to put myself out of business. Uh, and, and, and that's what uh, uh, the internet has, has done now. Anybody can uh, speak out, and it's pure democracy, uh, that some unknown person can get more attention than a corporation can. Uh, because uh, um, it's built from the bottom up, not from the top down. Uh, I, I know I'll, I'll do something on a blog uh, uh, because of the immediacy of it, and then I, I will um, embellish it uh, for publication in uh, a magazine. But I've lost three magazine assignments because it appeared on Huffington Post first, and uh, you know the, uh, magazines want exclusivity or at least you should publish it after it's taken uh, uh, off the newsstands and, uh, and, and they're given credit. So, so that's my lesson that I learned. But I'll still do a blog uh, because you can reach a lot of people immediately um, at, at virtually no cost. It's changed the, the, the uh, meaning of uh, the way protests are organized. Uh, you know, when I was a co-founder of the Yippies and we used to have to send out a notice of a demonstration on the old-fashioned mimeograph machines, get ink all over your hands, and then mail them and pay for the stamps and, and fill the envelopes. Now you just click send and it happens. It's electronic magic. The cover of Who's to Say What's Obscene has a few sort of stripes, uh, sections of uh, the Disneyland Memorial Orgy poster. Uh, there's a long article on it inside, but if, if uh, anybody wants to see what the post, the, the, the digitally colored version of that poster is, they can just check out uh, my website, paulkrasner.com, with two S's. Uh, 1959, when I was, uh, I was the editor of Lenny Bruce's autobiography, How to Talk Dirty and Influence People, and we were, uh, he was staying at the Y in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and, and I was there, and we went for, uh, to have breakfast at the Y, and talked to a guy who uh, was sitting nearby us. Uh, we ha had just seen Psycho, uh, and um, he thought that um, it was obscene to, to, to show uh, the naked body of Janet Leigh uh, and in the shower, even though uh, her nipples were, were, uh, were not shown uh, because of nipple phobia. And, um, you know, and that has continued to all the way to Janet Jackson and, uh, and the media, you know, they made a mountain out of an implant. Um, so, um, so we got to talking a, a, a about the violence in the movie, the stabbing, and that didn't offend the guy. And, and uh, uh, Lenny and I talked about, you know, the, the, he, you know, that that's obscene. And so uh, I think that that's what has happened, that obscenity used to just refer to um, sexual practice of some sort, or maybe language. 
but uh, I think it's um, morphed its way into being um, um, critical of anything. You know, well, if, if, if you think that that uh, menage a trois there is obscene, look at, look at the drones that are dropping bombs on Paris, Pakistan and killing civilians. That's obscene. And so the word has taken uh, on, an, uh, it's evolved in, into a um, more generalized uh, approach than, than just sexual activity. Y you know, th there are those who say that the internet is responsible for the death of irony, but, uh, you know, irony lives. It's, it, it has been on a hiatus for a while because people... Uh, uh, we're scared to speak out and seem unpatriotic. But, um, you know, there are taboos now. Taboos don't always have to do with sex. It's a taboo now uh, to say that the men and women who have died uh, in Iraq or Afghanistan uh, uh, did not die in vain. Uh, unfortunately, they have died in vain. They still should be honored for serving, although, um, um, in an unnecessary war, then it is in vain. And, um, uh, you know, I think supporting the troops would mean not sending them there in the first place. So my, my personal slogan is, irreverence is my only sacred cow. And the thing is that in times of repression, there's uh, more of a need for satire uh, to poke fun and truth at those who are responsible for the repression. And uh, I think that's the theme that, that runs through who's to say what's obscene. Uh, repression of freedom is obscene. And uh, uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it.